So according to an analysis conducted by The Washington Post, they looked at Republicans running for public office across the country for various seats in various races. And what they found was absolutely disturbing. A majority of all Republicans running for office are election deniers, 299 to be exact. Now, this report coincides with the report that we talked about last month, released by 538, where they found that 60% of all Americans will see an election denier on their ballots this November. So we are entering uncharted territory here as a country. We are about to experience a huge wave of political instability and volatility over the course of the next decade or so because of all of these election deniers, many of which are going to win. Now, Looking at that 299, again, the majority of Republicans running for office overall, a majority of the majority of those election deniers are going to win. Yeah. So 173 of the 299 are running in safe districts or running in safe races, and they're going to win their elections. Now, another 52 are running in tight races, so there could be much more that are elected. Now, the remaining 74, they are likely not going to win, so we can disregard them. But a disturbing fact is that in the House of Representatives right now, 139 incumbent Republicans already are election deniers, meaning they did not vote to certify the results of the 2020 election. So, we have 139 already, and we'll get at least 37 new election deniers after November. This is not going to go well for American democracy. Now, in the short term, this is going to produce a lot of political instability because many of these Republican election deniers who lose, especially in these tight races, we know that a lot of them are going to cry fraud. We've already seen this. Laura Loomer, for example, lost her GOP primary and she cried fraud. Carrie Lake, she won her GOP primary, but when it was still, you know, you know, when the uh, vote was still coming in and it was really tight, she was crying fraud. So if we hear in mass dozens of Republicans across the country who lose their races cry fraud, imagine what that will do on the macro level. It will be very destabilizing. Now, Americans don't often listen to political scientists, but we need to because what they say is important. This is not a phenomenon that you see in healthy democracies. You only see this in authoritarian regimes or in newly democratized states. The Washington Post reports, scholars said the predominance of election deniers in the GOP bears alarming similarities to authoritarian movements in other countries, which often begin with efforts to delegitimize election results. Many of those promoting the stolen election narrative, they said, know that it is false and are using it to gain power. Election denialism is a form of corruption, said Ruth ben Gayet, the author of Strongmen, Mussolini to the Present, and a historian at New York University. The party has now institutionalized this form of lying, this form of rejection of results. So it's institutionalized illegal activity. These politicians are essentially conspiring to make party dogma the idea that it's possible to reject certified results. So that's what we're going to see in the short term. In 2022, it's going to be ugly, most likely. But imagine the 2024 election where we possibly see the presidential candidate for the GOP, assuming it's Trump, and dozens of House Republicans lose their races and cry fraud all in unison. We're looking at a situation potentially worse than January 6th. This can't continue. January 6th was just the tip of the iceberg, and things probably wouldn't get better quickly, even if all Republicans stopped denying the results of the election, even if they saw January 6th as the wake-up call, that their lies you know, went too far. Still, it would take time for democracy to heal and people to start to respect the process. But when we so still see them continue to delegitimize the process, long-term, we're in for a really tough road ahead. The article continues, in the longer term, the country's democratic foundations are at risk. According to Larry Jacobs, this is a professor at political science at the University of Minnesota. Quote, it is a disease that is spreading through our political process and its implications are very profound, Jacobs said. This is no longer about Donald Trump. This is about the entire electoral system and what constitutes legitimate elections. All of that is now up in the air. And that's absolutely correct. Yes, Donald Trump has spawned dozens, hundreds of copycats. 
But now this is bigger than Donald Trump. The disease has spread and our entire political system is infected. These election denying Republicans are about to take power in states across the country at the federal level. And it's going to get ugly because they will be many of them will be in positions of power where they oversee elections or have some influence over the way that elections are conducted. And this means that if we want to continue to be a democracy as flawed as our democracy is of course there are things that we have to do to improve our democracy but if we want to maintain what level of democracy that we already have we have to push back forcefully against these election deniers because this level of election denialism it just isn't conducive to a long-term democracy democracy is on its deathbed if this continues, because it's only going to get worse. This is a disease that is spreading exponentially and it has no sign of slowing down. So people need to take this seriously. I get that these are the stories, you know, about democracy and whatnot that are relatively boring. But if you value what little democracy we have, you will take this seriously and you will do what you can to convince your Republican friends and family members to not participate in this. They can continue to be conservative Republicans, but if they vote for active election deniers, they're putting democracy for all of us at risk. And they need to know about this. They need to be aware of what they are doing to our entire system of governance. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.